Hi folks, it's Laura from So Very Easy. Today I want to talk to you about a very controversial subject. It's called pre-washing your fabric. Now, I have an opinion on how I want to treat my fabric and I'm going to share it with you today. A lot of fabric I like to pre-wash. Basically, I start off with thinking, how am I going to treat this item after I make it? So if I'm making a pair of jeans, and I know that that pair of jeans is going to go in the washer and the dryer, I wash and dry the fabric first. No surprises that way. It's already shrunk, it's already ready for me to work with. I just need to give it some pressing. There are other fabrics that perhaps I'm not going to wash. If I'm going to make a nice pair of curtains, a nice suit jacket that's going to the dry cleaners, I don't pre-wash it. I don't pre-dry clean it either because it's already clean. If I'm making something that I'm going to wash by hand, then I'll wash it by hand first. So those are the general things that I start off with on my opinion on, on how I'm going to start with the fabric. There's some other things you need to think about though. Are you going to wash or not wash them? Trim is a very good example. A lot of the trims will bleed. This one will bleed. It also shrinks. I made this here house coat, finished it all, did not pre-wash my trim, put the trim on and well, it shrunk but nothing else did. So trim is another one you need to think about if you're going to wash it or not. The other one is interfacing. Some interfacings will shrink. 100% cotton ones sometimes will. Also the fusible ones have a tendency to shrink. So that's another one you need to test before you start off. The other thing is now quilting fabric. Quilting fabric, it's so nice when it comes off the bolt, you do not want to wash it. But should you? These are my rules. If it's a light colored fabric, chances are it's not going to bleed. Most cotton nowadays is really good, so you can usually get away with it. If it's a dark fabric, this is what I'll do. So I'll take a piece of white cotton, it could be fleece, it could be flannel, it could be just plain cotton, even white muslin will do. I wet it and I rub it over top of the fabric. By doing that, it'll end up depositing color on the fabric. And if it's put color here, you know it's going to bleed. Definitely wash it. These have been washed and I know they're not going to bleed anymore, but they did. Now, this fabric, for example, it did bleed, so I needed to wash it. I washed it once, and just out of common curiosity, I did the test again. It bled again. So this will have to need pre-washing again. So now you've decided, am I going to wash it because it's going to bleed or not? If you have a quilt with 10 different fabrics, and you have one fabric that you know you're going to wash, and the other nine, you really don't need to. You need to consider, is there a possibility of the other fabrics shrinking? Because after the whole quilt is constructed, if the one that you've washed did not shrink, and the ones around it do shrink, then that's going to give a different look on the quilt the way you want it. So generally, I kind of think if I've washed one, I wash them all, even the backing. That way there are no surprises. The only surprises I want are roses at my doors and little boxes from my husband. So, some fabrics will give you the ultimate surprise. I bought this cute little pink little check because I wanted to put it in a baby quilt. Because I washed all the other fabrics first, I had to wash this one also. Well, what happened with this is it puckered. It's all, it almost looks like a seersucker. So that would have looked totally off on the quilt. Now, if I want to use it now, that's fine. Because I know that is actually how it's going to look. There will be no surprises with this. The other thing that I do like using, and for a long time I didn't really know if they worked, so I tried them, are these color catchers. You can get all different brands. So if I'm washing something that I'm not sure after it's constructed, I will put one of these in it. Now let me actually show you one that I used. Here is a new one, and here's one that came out of the wash. It really does work. All 100%? I don't know. But I'm telling you, it has worked really, really good for me so far. So I like to keep them on hand just so it's some, just in case something happens. Now, the other thing 
is how to wash it. If it's a large, large piece of fabric, you can wash it. I always wash all of my fabric when I do the first time on its own in a very gentle wash machine um, and with the temperature that I'm going to use. If I'm quilting, I put it in cold water. If it's something that I know is going to hit hot water, I put hot water in it. Most things nowadays we really don't use hot water, but just in case. Now for the drying. I do throw things in the dryer, but I don't completely dry them. I just dry them to a, just a little bit so they're just almost dry. Then what I'll do is I'll take them out of the dryer and I will lay them out. And as I lay them out, I'm going to put my hands over top of them like this way so that I can take out the wrinkles. And I will go all the way along and do this. And that will actually help it not be so wrinkly. The problem with why the fabric wrinkles so much is the dryer is twisting it in all sorts of things. And when it comes out of the dryer, sometimes you have this kind of a thing. And well, when it's been dried like that so hard and very dry, it actually sets the wrinkles in. Heat will set the wrinkles. So really try to get it out of the dryer before it's dry 100%. If you don't have time to iron it, throw it in the freezer. That way when you get to it, it's still damp. You can actually redamp something if you didn't get there on time and stick it in the freezer, and that helps. I don't know what the freezer does, but it seems to work for me. The other thing is sometimes when you need to repress it, you might need to repress it twice. I'll just use a spray water with a little bit of vinegar, very, very little, and the vinegar helps relax the fibers. Then I'll give it a good pressing. The second time I press it, I hit it with starch. And then it pretty much looks like the way I started off. Those are sort of my general ideas on why I wash fabric and when I wash fabric and if I wash fabric. Now I'm going to show you a quilt. And I have a story for All the right. quilt. So the story of this quilt. This quilt top was given to me. It arrived to me in a plastic bag. And it was given to someone who gave it to someone who gave it to someone who gave it to me. I have no idea who the original owner was. And it was just the quilt top. When I took it out of the bag, it had been washed after it had been pieced. It was all frayed. It really looked like a tattered mess. Um, but I wanted to see what I could do with it, so I started pressing it. As I started pressing it, I realized that there was three different types of stitching on here. The first set of stitching was very, very fine, beautiful hand-stitched all the pieces together. Then the ones attached to those had another hand stitching, but it looked like someone maybe younger or not so experienced. The stitches were a lot bigger, definitely a different person, because the seams didn't match. Then as I continued pressing it, I found machine stitching that held the quilt together. So I don't know how many people have worked on this. I know it's got to have been at least three, so I've got to be the fourth. So I've pressed it all and I decided just to baste it and sew it and just have it as a fun quilt. Little did I realize that the fabric in the quilt is actually from 1920s all the way to 1970s, maybe even the early 80s. So there is a lot of different fabric in here and it's almost like ages of fabric. Then I washed it. Now out of all of these colors, which one do you think? But I was very surprised. I didn't think any would because it had already been washed once. Well, let me show you. It was the orange. So the orange bled through on the back and on the front. So I had to wash it a couple of times to try to get some of that orange out of. So even though this was already pre-washed, or at least the majority of it was pre-washed, it still bled on me. I don't like surprises. Like I said, it's, it's not something I want to deal with. I want to know what I'm making is what I'm going to be finished with. So that really dictates to me, anyways, on how I'm going to treat my fabric. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea on, you know, if you're looking at a piece, if you're trying to decide to wash it or not, maybe that'll give you a better idea on how you want to treat it. It does me. Thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.